Hey guys, so it's week 16. Somehow I lost another week, um, but it's Sunday, so it's time to do a garden tour and see what's changed since the last time I showed you what's growing indoors and outdoors. So let's go take a look at everything. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kiri, and I'm just a city girl who wishes she was a country girl who is currently living in the burbs. And if this is your first time here, then welcome. On this channel, we talk about all things micro-homesteading, growing our own food, becoming more self-sufficient. We also talk about growing indoors and outdoors. I do a lot of my growing hydroponically. So if that is your thing, or if you want that to be your thing, then please go ahead and hit the subscribe and the notification bell so that you will know when I post videos in the future. And that is Friar Tuck my Canary. He likes to be part of these videos too. So I've got my coffee in my new mug because I always think it's important to enjoy the little things. Um, so I will grab my coffee and we will go on a bit of a tour. So as always, there seems to be more seeds to plant. I have seeds everywhere, literally seeds everywhere. Everything is growing well. The stevia is here. I'm going to try and make um, a tincture of stevia. I think you'd call it a tincture. Anyways, just uh, basically leaching it out in liquid form. Strawberries, these are the red alpines are doing well. The white alpines are just getting started. My little micro hat. This guy is just so tiny. It's like six inches tall. It hasn't grown anymore, nor will it, but it's just covered in blossoms, which is pretty cool. Dill is getting unruly as dill does. Cilantro is doing good. And the lettuce is coming to the end of its life. It's getting a bit tall. Um, and I have some cucumbers that I need to, to put in here soon. There's literally seedlings. No matter where you go, there's something in my house. So this is an exciting development. This is my two-tier uh, family rise garden. So just need to get that set up upstairs. And then we will seriously get a lot more growing going on. So one of the things I have up here is my nursery for my rise garden. For the new one, I get the lights up here. So I've got some cucumbers growing in there, which are looking good. I can see some of the little tiny uh, fresh bite peppers have rooted. We have some gorgeous purple basil growing. The fennel is doing amazing. The little red snackable peppers have also rooted. We have some more cilantro here because I love cilantro. If you are not on team cilantro, then obviously this is not for you. Have some test celery that is growing on and i'm super super excited to have some rosemary i had tried to root it a couple times from some store-bought rosemary and it did not go well um, and it's one thing that i don't have in my garden so i definitely want to get that going i have my monstera which i love well not edible this is one of my favorite plant babies i actually have three of them it was one plant but i split them into three successfully, so I'm pretty stoked about that. I have my pineapple here, and at some point I'm hoping I'll actually grow a pineapple. And in here, oh, there's actually a sprout coming up. So this is my ginger. I started it from an organic piece of ginger from the grocery store, and this is my third year of the same plant. I do keep it upstairs <laughs> in my house because it needs a very long growing season. Um, so I like to keep it in here because it's warmer and it seems to not mind it. And there we can see some of the ginger. I'm actually going to be using that later today to start a ginger bug um, because I'm going to make my own fermented ginger beer, which I will also be doing a video on, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so that was upstairs, so now we need to go downstairs and check on the other things going on down there. Um, there is still a bit of an issue, but I'll talk about that in a minute, and then we will go outside. So one of the big differences down here is this new rack that I got in. Don't mind the absolutely stunning paneling, which still needs to come out. Um, but I got this new metal rack with some awesome grow lights and just kind of expanding it. I'm probably going to put in a second one over there, but for now I have this one. I've got um, all my melons and squash kind of getting started here, uh, my curbits as well, and a bunch of tomatoes, of course, because they're one of my favorite things. So this will be all set up soon. So as always, I will apologize right now for the audio in the video, but the furnace room is not a good place to film. It happens to be where I keep my um, Arrow Garden Farm. 
and to have a lot of space on the dryer to set up a lot of my seedlings. Now that I have the shelves, it's going to be easier to start moving things out there. Uh, but for now, this is where they live. I also wanted to talk about issues because I think it's really important not to just make it seem like everything always works out because if you garden you know that everything does not always work out and I talked about it a little bit in my um, video on my last garden tour I believe about how my onion seedlings went to complete crap this year um, and I did the same thing I do every year but sometimes things just don't work and sometimes you make mistakes even when you know better which is what I did. So, I have been dealing with a terrible case of the thrips in here. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'm going to do a separate video on that. But basically, do not bring dirt from outside inside. Ever. Don't do it. It's a terrible idea because then you end up with issues like this. So, it looks like someone sprinkled white dust over everything in here which they did, I did that. Um, it's actually diatomaceous earth, but I will talk about that in a separate video, so don't mind all the white stuff. It does serve a purpose. So let's see what's going on over here. All right. So everything is way bigger than the last time. These were the first strawberries that I grew, um, the Alpine strawberries from Baker Creek. They're doing amazing. Tomatoes are all huge. These are some of the Midnight Romas from Row 7 Seeds. I am super, super, super stoked about those. They're a gorgeous, like, red and purple Roma tomato. Um, so we've got that. Lots of seedlings. I've got some ground cherries here. I've never grown those before, so I'm super excited. Um, some fennel, which wasn't looking too good, but it seems to be coming back. There's a little bit of hope there. I've got some tomatoes that grew massive. They were all planted at the same time. Um, so... I was trying out those plugs by um, Florflex. I have, would have to check, to, I should have marked it, which ones were plug ones and which ones weren't. Um, I'm wondering if that has something to do with it, but I definitely think I would need to plant a little bit differently next year because these guys are way too big. I'm going to see if I can limp them through until they go outside, but honestly I'm not sure because they're huge, but we'll see. Down here on the ground, we still got the Floraflex trays, which I love. Um, a couple things going there, a couple things didn't grow so well. Why I started lettuce so early, I have no idea. It was a terrible idea. But sometimes you just get overexcited, um, even when you know better. So that's what happens. Still haven't cleaned that out. How sad is that? But that is on the to do list for today, but we will see if it actually gets done. Um, beautiful orange accordion tomato. It's my first time growing um, this type. He's looking nice and strong even though he's quite big. So we'll see how he's doing and hopefully he makes it outside. I also have an avocado growing there. It's getting bigger. Oh yeah. So that is the downstairs situation. All right, so it's super bright out here. I should probably put my sunglasses on, but anyways. Um, so one of the things I mentioned downstairs was never bring dirt inside. The other thing to mention is don't bring your used pots inside uh, until you clean them. So that's something else I have to do today. Get these guys all clean so that they can plant another round um, of seeds. Because I still have loads more seeds to plant. The other thing I want to talk about is hardening off. So I've started bringing some of my uh, seedlings outside. This is a uh, Calibos cabbage. Uh, it's my first time growing it, but they look really cool, so I thought I would give it a try. Um, but yeah, so hardening off is definitely an important step. I have some other seedlings I'll show you over there, and I am going to do a whole separate video on hardening off. But just make sure, quickly, right now, just make sure you don't take any of your seedlings directly from indoors and move them outdoors because there is a very good chance they will die. You have to do it gradually, which is a process called hardening off. So, enough of me sitting here talking. Let's go take a look at how things are changing outside. So here's another one of the trays. This is a whole bunch here. These two rows are pink celery. Oh, we got a little friend there. Um, and these ones here are the Utah Tall Celery. Um, I also have some celery ac over there. Um, some sugar daddy snap peas. They didn't do very good, actually. I was hoping they would do better. So these guys need to be transplanted. And then um, these are some radishes, again. <sighs> not thinking straight, got overexcited and planted them. These guys are just, I don't think they're going to, they're not going to do anything. So those guys have to get cleaned out. 
I also have here some nasturtiums, which I love, which are actually edible. You can eat the flowers, everything, the seeds, um, and you can, the leaves are apparently good for making pesto. I haven't tried it yet, but that's what I hear. And then I have some of my giant sunflowers because um, I love growing these. These are the gray striped mammoth sunflowers. I just love growing those. They get massive and uh, they just, they get absolutely massive and they attract in so many pollinators. So I just love growing those. So here, my current bush is completely coming back to life. Like this thing, this was one of the first things that started to grow back in the garden. Um, and then down here, I just planted this one last year. It was the gooseberry that I thought had met its end last year. I don't know if it was the Japanese beetles or something totally took all of its leaves off, um, but it's coming back, so yay. So over here is the rest of the garden. I ended up moving all of the pots to kind of make um, a wall here, a bacon wall. Still need to move the barbecue over, get rid of a bunch of junk out here. And then at some point, that's gonna look really nice over there. It doesn't right now, it's just a mess. I have my horseradish that's coming back. I actually moved it from right there and dug up a huge piece of horseradish that had grown through the bottom of this big pot into the dirt. So probably going to split that and harvest a bunch and make some horseradish, which I think would be awesome. I put in some of the uh, sugar snaps because they're my favorite peas. So the hope is that these will grow up and over the arbor. And then on this side, I have another type of sugar snap. These are the uh, tendril. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they're a purple sugar snap. And they have lots and lots and lots of these little tendrils, so those ones should be interesting to try. I have a whole bunch of cardboard laid down here in the walkways. That is going to be, um, I'm gonna cover it in uh, wood chips, and then that'll be hopefully a nice walkway and keep all the grass down, but I just started laying all the cardboard down. And that whole area over there is gonna be covered in cardboard, and then I'll just plant right into it. So I have actually started to uncover some of the dirt here and plant. It looks like some parsley that uh, came back from last year, which I didn't even realize that would over winter. Um, and then here I started to see some of my little radishes coming up. So I'm trying multi-sowing these. So there's actually there in clumps of a, a bunch of radishes. So we will see how that does, but there's a bunch of different types in here. I put in the Pink Beauty, um, French breakfast and the uh, black, I think it was a black Spanish, I'll have to double check that, but I put those in as well. These and the onion seedlings that we're doing okay got transplanted. They seem happy enough, we'll see how they end up doing in the long run, but I definitely don't think this is going to be a good year for me for onions, but we will see. Garlic is doing fantastic. I, guess I'm, I think I mentioned this before, these were the ones that I had saved from last year and those ones over there are the giant bulbs that I bought and you can definitely see the difference. The only other things I have planted right now, still a bit early, I have some carrots in here that overwintered. Um, so my overwintered carrots are, are coming back. I also found some onions that were over in the blueberry bed um, and I transplanted them over here. So we'll see how these ones do. And then in here, I have planted uh, potatoes and I've got some straw over there because I'm going to try the root stout method. I just want to get a bit more compost on here. So I just have to order that. And as always going no dig, great part of that is you can walk on your beds. So that's nice. So over in the blueberry patch, we have some parsnips that overwintered, so because it's a biennial, this, these will actually um, produce seeds this year. So we'll see how that goes. And the blueberries, guys, they are doing, oh, let me focus. The blueberries are doing fantastic. I am so happy. There is signs of life on all six of the plants. So I have three of the Chippewas. They are in the front, those are the blue blueberries, and then and then at the back, there are actually three of the pink lemonade, which I am extremely excited to try. 
over in the raspberry patch, which needs to be cleaned. I found some of my asparagus. So excited about those. There's supposed to be more plants, but this was the only one that I could find, which I'm almost ready to eat. So the rhubarb is growing so well right now. This is its time. It loves this right now in the early spring. Um, it's trying to see. I think that there might be some signs of life on the grape, but we will have to see. Really, really hope I get some fruit this year. And then over here, we have a rogue strawberry. Actually, we have a couple of them. And things are coming back in the strawberry bed, which is amazing. I just got the shipping notification for the pine berries, so I'm excited. So hopefully they are going to be here on Friday. I'll, I'll do a video about planting the pine berries next week. Um, I am so excited to try these things. If you don't know what pine berries are, they're a white strawberry, and they essentially are supposed to taste like pineapples. So we'll see. I'm curious to make some pine berry jam and like lots of other things. So really been trying to get those for a very long time. So I'm so excited for those. All right, and now around to the front. Okay, so a complete disaster out here. There is a carpet of lemon balm because of course there is, which smells amazing, but it just takes over everything. The root of uh, the mint is also taking over. Um, found some some lettuce that came back from last year, so we'll have to see about what we can do with that. Tulips are up. All the flowers are going to have to be moved out. Sage is definitely coming back strong. Oh, look, there's some more lettuce. Pretty much everywhere. And then chives. These are great. I've had these pretty much since we moved in. Um, oh, and the peony is coming back super strong. And then the front garden here, I cannot wait until this is a raised bed full of vegetables. But uh, that will happen soon enough. Right now I'm just leaving the flowers out here and uh, we'll get this going soon. So it feels like this is the new ending spot I'm back at the garden gate. So thank you for coming on this garden tour with me. Uh, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up um, because YouTube loves that and then it gives me access to, and then I can reach more people. So until next time, don't forget to enjoy the little things and go out there and make food grow. Bye guys.